thinking about this large thing, we'll, we'll when we get to it, when we get to the code, we'll see what works best. But this, all these three boxes here might be containing one bigger div box again. But basically, this is what we have to make in HTML. So let's start. Let's go over to, let's get Dreamweaver up. And let's create a new blank HTML. Let's start from scratch. I'm going to call this the WinBug Home. WinBug Home. And we're going to start putting in our boxes. I'm going to save this. I can tell it's not saved because there's an asterisk there. So I'm going to go save. You should ask me where. I'm going to just put it on my desktop for now. This is going to be my index, my very first file that loads. Um, I'm going to go over here while we're at it. And there's my index. I'm just going to double click on it and open it up here so I can come here and view it very quickly just by going Command R, refresh. At the moment, it's blank. Let's put in some boxes now, so some div boxes. So this is going to be my, I'm going to start off with my header box. Um, in here, is going to, I'm just going to put some temporary text. The ID for this box is going to be header. I'm going to go save. Now, if I go over here, all you're going to see is the word header. But if I right click and inspect that element, there is that invisible box that goes across the whole page there. How do I make it the shape of this? So I've got to set a height. I've probably got to set a width to make sure it goes to the width of the, the page, so 100%. But I've got to set a height, and we don't have the height in pixels yet. We haven't transferred this into um, Photoshop and made specific pixel uh, lengths and widths for all these components. So let's just take a guess for now. Two ways or three ways we can do this is set the width in here. So style width 100%. Height. Maybe we'll set it to 200 pixels. So that's one way. Fire Command S and then go back here, Command R. If I have a look at that, you can see that in the blue area it's now 200 high and 1050, which is the size of the browser at the moment, wide or 100% wide. To make it visually easier to see, while we're developing, I'm going to put a red border around it similar to this. So just as a temporary thing, I'm going to say border one, one pixel wide, this border. I want it to be the color red. So that is F00 and I want the border to be dashed that's the border style command S now command R now I don't need to go down to here to inspect to see um, how big these div boxes are I can usually see them okay so there's my header this is the container that's going to have the logo two other um, third-party logos and this is also going to be the color of aqua so that's go over here now before I keep putting style in this header tag this is going to be an issue because if I have one page and then I have another page in a different file and I have that 20 times over I'm going to have to go into every single one and change the color or the style. So if I wanted to get rid of that border all of a sudden in all of these, I'm going to have to go and open every file and delete all the rules for that style in that inline um, div. And the same would go for if we put the CSS in the header here. So if we put style in here and put those rules in here for this ID header, we would have to, well, I'll just put them in there now. So I'm going to take them out of inline and I'm going to put them at the top and get rid of this. So now if this was a page, I'll get rid of this. If this was a page and I made an about page and a contact page, the, I've still got the same similar problem where 
if I need to change something for the header for each page that I go to, if I go to the About page, it's going to have something different. And if I want it to be the same as the all the other pages, I've got to go to every single page and change at 200 to 150. If I wanted it shorter, I've got to change it three times. So the way we get around this is we create one style CSS file and we link to that file or every file in the website um, folder, every HTML file will link to that one CSS file. So we don't have to change that one CSS file. So we're going to take this out, cut, and we are going to create a new CSS file. And in here, we're going to put our style. We don't need style tags in CSS, the actual CSS file. I'm going to save this as our style. I'm going to put it on the desktop because I know that's where our index file is for now. And I'm now going to link to that file. So I'm going to go link. The type is text CSS, the href or the link to the style.css is simply style.css because there's no it's not in a folder. We might actually put it in a folder. So let's put it in a style or CSS folder or assets folder. Assets. I'm going to save. So, if I command R, there's no style being applied to this header, even though the rule is in the CSS. But it's because you can't find it. I need to put this into the assets folder. Now, if I refresh, did I spell assets right? If I refresh, it should have um, applied this to the header. Let's see. Ah. I think I've forgotten something. Rel style sheet. That's one thing you had to put in as well. So if I refresh, there you go. It's applied the CSS, the external style sheet, cascading style sheet. And now all we have to do is only edit this, these styles once in this CSS. And we can Go. We'll, we'll have to go back and forth, but if you only, you only want to adjust styles and stuff, you only need to adjust this, this file, and you don't even have to touch this file. So this is sort of like the template with the boxes, and then this style will be telling how what those boxes to do, what, how, what shape, what rules, what colors, and all that, that sort of stuff. So let's go back here and put some more boxes in. I'm going to now put in the, this midsection here. So let's put in a, I think we should put in a, a bigger box and then put these one, two, three, even four into a smaller, um, inside of another box. So I'm going to call this the ID of the middle or the content. No, we're going to call it middle or body. Body content. You never have spaces, so I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. And if you did really want a space, you would put an underscore there. But I start second words with a capital, so it's easier to read. Now inside of this is going to be another box called div ID. This is going to be called content. We might change the names as we go, because as we go, they're going to sound a little bit funny. We're also going to have a box that's on the left. So we're going to say ID left, uh, what would we call this green section, left panel. Just put a word in there for temporary. And this is our content. I'm just going to copy this because we're going to put one on the right. Right panel. And we're also going to have a footer. Now I'm not sure if that footer should be at the bottom of just this middle 
yellow section, the, the content, or it should be at the bottom of everything, so even at the bottom of here, and it should maybe cut this off. I think it should be at the bottom of here, and that should go all the way down. So we'll just we'll put it in here, but we can change it later. And we're going to call that footer. Oops. Okay. Now, if I go, I'm going to change this to um, content wrap. Now I'm going to go over here and refresh. Now we've got all these empty divs, and they're not they're not doing much. They're just sitting there. We've got to tell them what to do now, just like we did with this header. Before I do anything, there is a bit of a margin and padding along here, and that is because we haven't set a rule for the body and HTML. So I'm going to go body padding set it to zero as the initial value and margin I'm going to set it to zero also I'm going to end save I'm going to go over here and this should now go all the way to the edge refresh and it didn't okay what's the problem here padding zero margin zero I might have to put HTML in there as well Alright, if something isn't working, that's fine. We, we can go into here, into the inspect window, and see what is going on here. So it's actually being set to 8 pixels, and that shouldn't be. Let's see why this isn't working. Body. Uh, is it loading? Let's have a look into the header. Is it loading the style? Should be. Let's put in maybe we have to put in pixels at the end there. Let's put in another rule and see if the link is actually working. So let's test this. Content wrap. Let's put a um, copy that. Let's set a rule for content wrap. Let's put a border in for content wrap and see if this gets applied over here. So that's not working either. Refresh, refresh. We might have a cache issue. Let's have a look at that. Settings. I'm just going to look up cache. Clear the cache. Cache images. Yes, from the beginning of time. Let's close that. Let's close that too. And let's just open this up. Still not working. Style is in there. Ah, okay. Can't, this is a very silly problem. When we move this into the assets folder and then we went back to the style and we clicked command S, we actually saved it back because originally it was on the desktop, remember? So we've actually saved those new rules into here. We need to close this, go back, put this in, back into here. I'm going to replace it because they have my new rules in here. And then I'm going to open this in Dreamweaver. So now we'll be editing the one that's actually in the, the right place in this folder. Now if I refresh, there you go. So there is the, going back to what, what we were originally doing, the padding and the margin. There shouldn't be any of that around the edge there. Um, and we've also put a red box around the content wrap. Let's make this a different color. Let's make it yellow, so that would be a mixture. If you don't know the, the code for it, we can just go color and set it like that. Command S, Command R. So there it is. Now, let's get back to it. I need to now style this box. 
and this box. So the height is probably going to be 100% for those boxes. And the content, so the content, we have content, we have left panel and right panel. Now for these boxes, they're going to be height of, we'll, we'll just try it first, height of 100%, height of 100%. And instead of having to put this border in every single time, I think I'll just do a div border. So every div that I put in will have a border, a temporary border. So div, put a border around it. That way I can get rid of all these. The only downfall of that is that it will be the same colour, all red. But if I want to change the colour, I can just simply go border colour and change it to yellow. Orange-ish. And just copy that. But to keep it clean, I won't. I'm just going to leave it out for, for the minute. Now, content is going to have a height, a specific height, is it? And we'll set it to 100% for now. So they're all going to go whoosh, 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 down. We want them to fit together sideways. So we're going to have to divide the page up, as in this doesn't go for 100%. This probably goes maybe 90 and then there's 5% and 5%. So let's split that up. Let's say width width goes we, we won't make it 90, we'll say 88% because we've got to work with um, the borders that take up a little bit of that percentage as well. The width of these side panels will be about 5% each. All right, now let's go and have a look. Refresh. So they are 5%, 5%. The content is 88%. So those two should fit in this, this area. And if I change the size of this, this they're going to change dynamically with us. Let's go back. Now I've got to put them side by side, so there, 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 there. And the way we do that is we add another rule, float left. And this will make all any object that we tell it to float in line, in the same line, if it's got space. So refresh again, and there we have it. The left content and the footer, we've got to tell the footer what to do next. But this left and right panel should should be in line. That's because we've got this here. Let's take this out and put that down below. Refresh. Okay, we're getting close. Left, let's put that, change that left to right. Left, content, right, and now we have the footer at the bottom. Let's put in some rules for the footer. Footer is going to be width 100%. Height is going to be all this height here. If that's 200, then maybe a third of that, so about 30. So 60 pixels, and that'll do for now. I'm going to change this to red as well. This color is annoying me. F00. There we go. So the footer goes 100%. It, we have the content there. We have a little bit of a gap over here, so we've got to get those numbers right. Let's get those numbers right. We 
might put some padding in there too. So between the content and this, we should have a little bit of padding here. Let's do that first. So on each side, we're going to have a margin of about five pixels, top and bottom, left and right. There you go, there's five pixels there, there's five pixels there, five pixels there, we could probably go a little bit more. Let's try and change this to 89% and see what happens. Too much, let's push it down to the next line. All right, let's take that back, 88, and just put in maybe a few more pixels here, seven pixels. So two more pixels on each side. Maybe we go to eight pixels. Nine, or we'll go ten pixels. I think that'll be too much. Yeah, so it's nine pixels. Sometimes you do this, trial and error. And I'm not taking into consideration the borders as well. So when we take those borders away, we're going to have one, another one pixel, two pixels, three pixels, four pixels, five, six, seven, eight pixels to deal with. So if I take this away, this is what I'm talking about, just test to name that. So it won't find this, it won't apply this rule anymore. If I refresh, there would be a little bit of a gap over here. But basically, you won't see it anyway. We're, we're nearly at the stage of having this set up where we just need to then insert the images as background images or image tags um, into here. Let's start with this header, it's got to be that aqua colour. Now, I don't, I don't know where that aqua thing was. Let's try and find out what, what the colour was. We'll do it in Photoshop. Um, so, windbug. I don't remember what that aqua color was. I think it was. We'll go to one of the um, pages. Don't know. Windbug mock one. We'll go through these. Two. No, it wasn't that. That's one of the things that we need to take. Those this footer. Three, four. I think it was 10 or something. No, it was this one. So I'm going to take this off and I'm going to open this in Photoshop. And I'm going to find out exactly what that color is by going like this using the color picker. When Photoshop wakes up, there we go. So color picker, I'm going to go there and I'm going to get the code for that color, the hex code, and then I'm going to come back to here. I'm going to leave the dashes off for the time being. In the header, we're going to change the background color to a color. And the color is that code that I just copied from Photoshop this color. If I refresh, there we go. So we've got the header going. Let's get the content going. Because the content page needs to be an image. And that image, and let's put a temporary image in there for the time being. Bike on beach, I think it was. Anyone? Even if it's a low res, we'll just stretch it out. Probably a small res would be fine because we can always replace it very easily later. Let's put this image into the assets folder under another folder called images just to be um, neat. And I'm going to call it the content BG. Again, no spaces. Um, take note of the the file type because we need to put that in. 
So content is going to be, I'm going to put an image in content here. Instead of content, it's going to be image source. It's in the assets folder under images folder and it's called bike. Oh, no, it's not called bike, it's called content bg.gif. And we're going to end there. Save. I'm going to come over here and have a look. Refresh. Now we have the bike image in there, but it's not filling out that content area. So let's put in some rules under content. So content image, because that's the tag, and we only want it, these, these rules to apply to any images inside of the content box, so inside of this box. We want the width of that image to be 100%, the height to be 100%. Let's go and have a look if that fixed it. There we go. So now it fills out that area, that content area in there. Now we have a bit of a padding issue. Now remember we put some margin in there. We actually specified that to go around 9 pixels around here, here, here and here. Now we can specify to say no 0 at the top but keep 9 on the sides and none at the bottom. And The way we do that is we go 9 for the this is how it would work. 9, we can put 0, 0, 0. And these three zeros represent each side. So 9 on the top, starts from the top, 9 on the right, and it goes clockwise. 9 on the bottom, uh, 0 on the bottom, and 0 on the left. So at the moment it's saying 9, 0, 0, 0. We need to change that to 9, or 0, 9, 0, 9. So 0 from the top, 9 on the right, 0 at the bottom, 9 on the left. Save. I'm going to go back, refresh, and we've pushed that up to 0, but there's still the 9s on the, on the left and the right, and the 0 at the bottom. So as you can see here, we are slowly creating this design or layout in HTML and making it visual in the browser. And we only started with a few simple div boxes. This is all the HTML looks like. This is the only part that, we, that we've put down in the HTML file. And the style, as you can see, is the really important part here because we're telling those boxes what to do. If we took that style away, so if I said style, put a, another S there and saved it, so it's going to look for a file that's, that's spelt that way. It won't find it. And I refresh, that's what the HTML actually looks like. So you can see the importance of the CSS. Put it back, refresh, and our page is starting to look like what they wanted in the in the feedback that they've given us. So from there, try to continue you know, making this all this happen, and I'll help you along the way.